Welcome, everybody. Connecting with KCWG Truth Guys. Welcome, Team Unbreakables. Pastor Starks, it's uh, Team Unbreakable. It's Team Unbreakable. How you doing? How you doing? Yes, sir. Yes. Your brother will keep it like this. For sure. Okay. Welcome. It's Hash. You do an intro. Welcome, KCWG The Truth. Uh, you have just tuned in to Speaking Truth in Love. We are Truth and Love Ministry radio show, Speaking Truth and Love. Um, my husband, Pastor Brian, Mr. Unbreakable Warren. <laughs> and that is me. That's Pastor you. Brian, Mr. Unbreakable Warren. And my wife, Prophet Gina Guy Warren. She's uh, she's got this interview deal set up for me today. Oh. Um, I feel honored and uh, privileged. My wife is actually going to interview me for this this show. This is going to be pretty awesome. You feel honored. Yeah, this, this is your story. This is your book. I feel honored. I'm really excited about what God's doing here. Yeah. So you know, we want to give a shout out and say hello to uh, you know, all of our not only our listeners on KCWG. If you are unable to watch on Facebook Live, you can go ahead and call into the radio station, and there's a, a 760 number. Uh, we're, our assistant's going to put that up on the screen for you, so you can go ahead and see that and call in. If you have to go you know, run and jump in the car, uh, don't jump in the car. <laughs> that sounds like, I don't know. Open the door slowly. Yeah, just open the door and put the seatbelt. Just don't jump. But I am honored. Uh, we, Less is moving. Amen. Well, yeah. well, wait. That's just because only fighters think like that. But uh, we are hashtag the Facebook pastors. Um, it is so exciting to be on today. Uh, we want to thank you for all your graciousness and your love, um, your letters, your gifts, your everything you've been doing while we've been on sabbatical. Yes, we still are. Um, we are here tonight for a special interview. I'm really excited to interview my husband for sure uh, regarding his new book that has just been released. Um, on Amazon. We like to say AmazonSmiles.com and we'll be telling you why of that. But welcome to Unbreakable Love, the Brian Warren story. And uh, this book is now available as we speak on Amazon. And uh, so we're excited to talk a little bit about, I mean, Brian, you know, you came on the scene with Truth and Love Ministry International. Um, we, you know, we've been on the radio for a few years now. Uh, we then just acquired so many beautiful uh, partners from Facebook, uh, which they deemed us the hash, how to do it, hashtag Facebook pastors, and just have fallen in love with so many people. But I have to say, I know everyone has fallen in love with you. I think I'm a little hard pill to swallow for some of them, but they all have fallen in love with you, Brian. And um, I think today, I know today, you're going to fall in love with my husband even deeper because. We're going to get into a little bit about your story um, on, uh, regarding this book. And so thank you for joining us. And thank you, KCWG listeners. Um, I, I love this. You know, I kind of want to start off with something, Brian, that I think is amazing. There is a, a legend in the uh, UFC, and his name is Kimo. Leopoldo. Ah, did you say that? You're afraid I was going to boo, 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 boo. <laughs> speak in tongues. He thought I was going to speak in tongues or something. But Kimo Leopoldo. Did I say that right? Yes. Hold on. <laughs> and uh, he's just a legend in the MMA industry. And I love it because he wrote the forward in your book, honey. And, um, you know, I read this book when I first met you. And actually, you didn't sell it to me. You gave it to me. Uh, you were hustling all your books in 2013, but we'll get into that. And uh, you just handed it to me. I knew you needed the money. Uh, so still wrote you a check for it, but you, you didn't want it. But uh, that's just a little bit about your character. But I love this, uh, Brian. Um, this is just, I just want a couple pieces, and we're just going to, we're just going to get into some pieces of Brian's heart, and so you can understand why he is this crazy pastor with all these fight scenes on, in, uh, you know, on social media, and you got to know who the man is to understand what flows out of his heart, right? Out of the overflow of your heart, your mouth's going to speak. Can I say something really quick? Um, it was an honor for me to, um, it's actually 
an honor for me to have someone like Kimo write the forward to this book. Um, he, he was he was somebody I really looked up to, um, and I'll yes. talk about that later, but but it was an honor. So she, oh, yeah. she's going to read just a little bit about the Woody speech. But I love this. He says, Brian is not only your friend, his, his, a friend of, of his. He said, but Brian's like an iceberg. Most people only see the tip. But there's so much more to view underneath. He's not a fighter that you judge by his record. He's a warrior you love to watch. Now, I just get the Holy Ghost chills on that because, you know, we got a lot of pastor so-and-sos, a lot of people behind the pulpit, and, and they they proceed or, or, or perce- we perceive them to be something. But I love that Chemo says, you know, you're not just that fighter, that that celebrity, that, that you know, persona in the cage, but... You're somebody that he loves to watch. And he says that Brian's like a Japanese fighter who keeps one pace. A steady rhythm throughout the entire battle. He gets neither too high nor too low. And he doesn't rise and then drop. He gets stronger the longer he goes. And, you know, that coming from Kimo, uh, you know, a a multi-championship belt holder, correct? And that speaks a lot about who you are. Um, I think as a pastor, I mean, I know you, my husband, but as a pastor, I'm really excited that you guys are all going to get to be able to hear some of this about him. But I just wanted to read a couple excerpts uh, and then get into some questions that I chose. I chose some of these questions, listeners, KCWG listeners, our team Unbreakables on Facebook. Um, I chose these questions because I thought maybe they might be the ones that you would like to know a little bit more about your pastor you know, the one that you're sewing into, the one that you're praying for and you're believing in. And I thought they might want to know some specifics. But Chemo goes on to say, I'm not sure if I ever told Brian this, but he became my teacher back then. He was younger than me, yet he managed to teach me things. Not only how to throw harder elbows and fists, but things that go beyond the cage, like how to be consistent in my Christian walk. Being a Christian in the MMA isn't easy. In fact, it's the hardest fight of all. Now, I hope you guys can feel the presence of the Holy Ghost because, look, baby, I am lit up. So I guess, you know, my first question, Pastor Brian, I have to say Mr. Unbreakable because I'm interviewing you, so I have to be all professional. Mr. Unbreakable Brian Morin, um, so this story, the Unbreakable Unbreakable Love, the Brian Morin story, it centers pretty much around one person that has your heart. Who is that? Uh, Most definitely. The the reason... That this book, one of the reasons this book came about was um, I went through a very tough time in my life, and um, this is definitely about my daughter. Mm-hmm. Um, and the title, the 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 man that wrote the book, he um, he asked me, uh, Brian, what is? Uh, I'm, I don't, I'm not, I'm not feeling the title. You know, I'm not feeling it. But I, I had to explain to him, you know, that God has never left me. And I will never leave my daughter. And this is an, mm-hmm. his unbreakable love for me and my unbreakable love for my daughter. So Amen. I said, you got to use the title. And that's the title. I love that. I love that. So my other question would be then, you know, Kimo said that being a Christian, uh, there's a lot of temptations in the, in the industry. And, um, and just being Christian in the MMA fight world was one of the, is one of the hardest things. I guess my question, and I, I, I know because we've heard a lot of questions being asked social media um what do you why do you think that a fighter can actually be a pastor and how can a fighter be a christian it doesn't make sense should a fighter be a christian (laughs) you know what that that was those were some of the toughest questions questions to answer when i was a a baby christian um about 18 years ago when i first started this whole fight thing i became a christian at the same time and uh, when people ask me that christian seasoned christians would ask me how can you be a fighter and be a Christian, and I would just throw the question right back on them. Well, how can you be a barber and cut someone's hair? I mean, what does Jesus have to do with you cutting anybody's hair? And I would, I would just say, you know, I'm a fighter, and this is what I do. I consensually sign an agreement to compete against another fighter, testing himself. And I, there's no ill will, hard feelings ever when I fight. So it's just me being competitive, and this is what God put inside me. Mm. Like I can't, I can't explain it. I never knew why I was grafted to this. Other than the fact that when I seen it on TV, the UFC on TV, I was drawn to it. I was like, that's what I want to do. Because there was nothing else in hmm. nothing else in the world that I ever saw on TV or anything that what gave me the feeling I got, I got as soon as I seen those two hmm. guys competing. 
I was like, that's what I want to do. But yes. a funny, a funny situation is, I saw somebody fighting. I think it was uh, 260 pounds fought a 170 pound guy, threw him on his head. Oh my! And I was like, wait a second, I better rethink this. And uh, that was back when there was no weight yes. classes, guys. So then, um, it's just crazy how it all unfolded. Four days later, I found myself fighting in Mexico. Yeah, I think that's chapter one of your book. Um, it does talk about, you know, late 1998 in Mexico. But, um, you know, I think what maybe what some of the our, our partners, our ministry partners and our listeners around the world might want to know is, how did the book come about? You know, what were your living six, um, situation? What was your working circumstances when you were writing this book? This book was the one of the most difficult times and difficult things that happened that ever happened to me. And, and one of the reasons it, I believe that this book was written was to help me heal from something I was mm -hmm. going through. It was a very traumatic uh, situation for me, something I did not want to happen, but I went through a divorce, mm -hmm. my ex-wife, and it just... Well, I lost both my studios in 2009. The economy mm. took a, a dive and uh, lost both studios. And then uh, wife leaves me and uh, I found myself homeless. Uh, left on my own accord. I left the home peacefully. Didn't want to disrupt the atmosphere mm. between my wife and mm -hmm. my daughter. And mm -hmm. I was the one who left. And uh, probably not the smartest idea, but, you know, looking back on it. But, you know. It, it is what it is, and and I, I stayed very close to my daughter in, in the area where she was, and I nobody hardly anybody knows unless you go read, read the book. But mm -hmm. not even my, some of my best friends they would tell me, Brian, why didn't you tell me you're going through a situation? I don't want anybody feeling sorry for me. I'm going to find a way out of this situation. Mm -hmm. But I was living in my car mm -hmm. in a BMW, a very nice BMW, in a park close to my daughter's school, just so I could be close to her and taking showers mm -hmm. at gyms and things like mm -hmm. that. It was just mm -hmm. it was a tough situation, but. The book, the book came out, and I got a lot of healing when this book came mm, out. I, I love that. I mean, I had, I call them my safety glasses, but I was always wearing my glasses when this guy was interviewing me for the book. I mean, no one knew it, but I was in a church, and and, and a lot of my feelings were coming out in mm, this book, and I, mm. I believe I got a lot of healing from it. I think you had mentioned that uh, what uh, precipitated this was a, a, a local newspaper uh, came to you and wanted to do a story on Mr. Unbreakable. And uh, from there, a publisher was introduced to you. Right? Is that the story? Yes. The, um, there was a, a local um, magazine actually mm. wanted to interview me in, in the town that I lived in, in Southern California. And a, um, this man came to we, – we hooked up. We got together, sat down, and, and had a bite to eat. And he just – it went so well. This interview went so well. Mm. I thought, this guy is, writes amazing. We got together again, and we started discussing my life story. And all of a sudden um, – this book was done in six months. It, mm. it happened that quick. Mm. Mm. It, it was it was an amazing project, and you know I, I was totally blessed by this man Dan Arrow that came into my life. Yeah, he, definitely. He helped definitely get this thing going. Dan Arrow got this going for you. We're so grateful. Um, shout out to Dan Arrow for putting this story together for you, and um, just I mean, yeah, you were hustling. I mean, you were just you know you just lost everything. Uh, you were used to taking your daughter. I, you guys are going to hear the stories. They're just phenomenal. I, I think it's amazing because, you know, there are some really good books out there. There really are. But when you read a story about, you know, the Bible says it's in the book of Revelation, it's it's the blood of the lamb. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's his blood. But in addition to, it's the word of Brian Warren's testimony. And that's the beautiful thing is your testimony is going to bring healing to so many people, uh, and especially now because they're going to see where you are now, and they're going to read this book from 2013. Um, but uh, also, you know, were you working at the time? Yeah, I was. I, I've never stopped working since I was, I don't even know, 12 years old. I've always, I've always worked. But at this particular time in my life, um, I was fighting. I was still a professional fighter, and I was actually just hustling ticket sales, and uh, you know, I was. I was doing whatever I could to uh, to eat and put gas mm. in my car mm. to, and to mm. live, and yeah, mm. most mostly hustling ticket sales. And and, and uh, as a as a not a high level fighter, you have to you have to sell tickets, you know. And if you don't sell tickets, you know these promoters aren't going to use you on the show. So, mm. and I had a big following, and I've always mm. had a pretty big following mm. because I've I've gone out there and and, and yeah. mingled and, and you know yeah made sure that I made sure that I uh, made friends all the time. 
And uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I think that's I think that's uh, important for your listeners to know. Um, hustling. You know, you came from San Bernardino, which is the number one murder capital of city in the U.S. So that's kind of crazy. I think it's Chicago now, but but back, is it back, Chicago? Back oh, in, it was okay. But but at one point, I believe, uh, okay, like 1992, like the year I graduated, it, it was, was like the, the number one murder capital of the world. Or okay, it's, it's still pretty high. But see, so. that's important for people to know where you came from, and when you're in that kind of poverty, you learn to hustle, and. Uh, that's the exciting thing about where you're at today. And, you know, some may, you know, why are we, uh, why are you re, uh, republishing the book now in 2017 is because now you don't have to hustle anymore. You now have the rights to Amazon, which you didn't before. Uh, you had to hustle books and whatever you sold was the money you got, which was a blessing. And I see why they did that. They wanted to make sure you had something in your hand to try to make some money, but, uh, you had no idea what was going on on Amazon. And so thank you now for going to Amazon, um, Amazon.com or Amazon Smiles because they, if you choose Truth and Love Ministry International, they donate 5% to the nonprofit of your choice. So thank you in advance for choosing Truth and Love Ministry International um, as we're cleaning the White House, Church House, and the Courthouse. But um, so I love that, Brian. So um, who... I guess, you know, who are some of the fight? We see McGregor right now. McGregor's getting ready to fight Mayweather. There's some huge things going on in, in, in UFC and in the MMA. But I think people, to your credit, they need to know that you were the pioneer of, uh, of, of this. And so my question is, who did you fight? Wow, who did not <laughs> The question should be, who did okay, I? Okay, I rephrase. Did, who didn't you fight? Who did I, fight? Um, I fought a lot of the uh, a lot of high-level fighters out there that, that were... In my era, I, I call my uh, I call my era pretty much the, the Chemos, the Gracies, the Ken Shamrocks. Those are the type mm. of people I looked up to, and that's that's who we watched when we first me and my buddies to you know go roll out the the wrestling mat in San Bernardino High School gym and, and uh, mm. pretend we're doing UFC uh, before this all came about. But I believe my era was the the era that kept the sport alive when we were in the undergrounds mm. and you know. We weren't supposed to be doing it. It was illegal in California. It was illegal in a lot of states. And, um, you know, I believe we kept the sport alive. And we didn't get paid that much. Now, my first fight in Mexico, I got paid $80. Lord Jesus. And and I had Mm -hmm. a lot of injuries in that fight. And it wasn't even about the money back then, you know. And now, it's all about the money. Everybody, it's... Yeah, it's big money now. Look look at it now. The Mayweather, Gregor fight, it's the money fight, you know. So, you know, maybe, you know, I... But I know the Lord put me through this to, to mm. gather the experience and the and the um, the fight fight experience and fight knowledge and, and be able to bring that to today's church because that's oh. yeah we'll just we'll, I'm sure For we're gonna sure. talk about that mm-hmm. later. Mm-hmm. But we definitely need some uh, some fighters in the some church. frontline warring uh, ministries right now, right? Definitely. And I think to your credit, uh, you know, a, a lot of the Vegas fights that we've attended together, uh, you know, we laid hands on Cody. Um, Garbrandt. Garbrandt and uh, uh, Chad. Mendez. Chad Mendez, thank you. Um, you know, and they both knocked their opponents out, probably because the glory of God was all over them. But the awesome thing is, um, Ryan, these, all of these men from, I, you'll have to help me some of the names, but the, who's our black brother that does the refereeing? I forgot oh, his name. Her, her, her Dean. Thank her you. Dean, Herb Bruce, Dean. Bruce Buffer. The Bruce announcer. Buffer. We get to Vegas and they all run up to you. And, you know, I have to say on his behalf, because he won't say it, they run up to him and say, you know, you're a legend, Brian. You are a pioneer in this industry. And what we loved about you is your integrity. And uh, how did you get the name Mr. Unbreakable? Where, where did that come from? Do you get break any bones? Oh, or noses? No, or no, noses? I, like you have more than one nose. <laughs> well, how many pro- noses did you break? Looks like it, how many noses did you nose, break? It goes this way. Yeah. Um, well, actually, uh, so cute, you though. know, there, there was a movie out at the time called Unbreakable with Bruce Willis and Samuel L. Jackson. And uh, there was a, a guy that would get in plane crashes and car accidents, and he found that he, they can, he couldn't be hurt. Oh. It's a really interesting story. It's, yes. It's a very interesting story. It actually, I, I can relate a lot to it. And then there was the other side, the guy that always got hurt. Well, it was funny because the, when I fought on the big fights, I wouldn't get injured. I wouldn't get hurt. But when I was in practice, I'd break my finger, break my nose. I mean, a lot of stuff. Not and that you couldn't break your spirit. 
unbreakable spirit. Yeah, that's definitely. Yes. And that's, I mean, that's so important because there are so many studies on people that enter into ministry and we know the haters come, the barrage of bullets come, uh, you know, everybody's, you know, many people are going to oppose you. And so it's so very important that you understand what you're called to do, regardless of the voices and the naysayers, uh, because there's been a lot of pastors and ministers that have left their mantle due to so much pain and heartache from words, from blows that they've taken. Um, and so I think that's really important for people to know that's where Mr. Unbreakable uh, comes from. I got to say something because I was about to say it when I was talking about the movie Unbreakable. And there's a part in the movie, um, Bruce Willis is Unbreakable, Mr. Mr. Unbreakable. Um, and, and he was told, somebody had told him that he couldn't go further in his professional career. Mm -hmm. So some words stopped him, but he never knew what his full potential was. He never maxed out on a bench. His son was the one that came to him and said, Dad, let's put some more weight on. Mm. I got the chills now. All he was right. Like, he's, he never maxed out his full potential. Ooh. Some Ooh. words stopped him oh. from going further than what he could have gone. So it's a it's a great movie. I'm going to watch, preach it. I'm right have to watch there. it again. Yeah. I mean, that'll preach. And so that's so important to understand that, um, you know, what you're made of. You know, the, the Bible declares that, you know, many, many will um, lay hands on the sick you know, cast out demons, you know, be full of, you know, everybody's going to fall out, all of these things. But if you do not have character, you know, if you do not have love, you know, your unbreakable love, we are truth and love. If you do not have love, then what do you have? And uh, so it's so important that it's empty words, empty words, absolutely no, empty no words. Action. No action. Yeah. And, you know, I think anybody could, could just, you know, looking at some of the, uh, the uh, chapters in your book, Brian, I mean, you know, you didn't even know who your father was, you know. Uh, I got to say, this book yes. is like, this book is like Crip Night to me. When she just said that right now, oh, it almost made me cry because, like, so honest. I can't, I, know. I cannot hide my, I'm, I'm as real as I can be. As real as it gets. I wear my feelings on my sleeves. If I'm mad, I'm mad. If I'm upset, I'm upset. If I'm going to cry, I'm going to cry. And there's nothing, not a camera in the world. Amen. Not a person, not a Preach man. It. Not somebody that's going to stop me from mm -hmm. being who I am. And when she just said that, I almost broke down because I, yeah, that, that's tough. I mean, that's tough to not know who your father is and then to, mm. to want to know who your father was. And I wrestled with that. I wrestled mm. with that my whole life. And I found out at 13 year old, 13 years old, that my dad that raised me wasn't my real father. Now that was a shock. You know, that was a, <laughs> that was a shotgun blast to mm. my chest right mm. there. That, mm. that had me, man, that jacked me up. So yes. it took me a while to snap out of that one. And, and like what this whole thing's the whole my whole life's been a lie up until now, mm. you know. So how do you come out at 13 years old? How do you recover from that? I bet so many listeners are relating right now. And not to jump ahead, but you know the work you're doing with uh, Gregory Wark. Uh, I have to say, what what Pastor Brian just <laughs> he's not trying to hit, he's trying to hit a fly. Uh, what you just spoke uh, was what, in essence, grabbed the heart. Of Greg Wark, who uh, not only was Prophet Kim Clement's best friend, uh, so that should tell you something. If uh, Prophet Kim kept kept uh, Greg that close to him, Amen. We as prophets only keep the real deal around us. Trust me. Um, but it was that statement that you just made that grabbed his heart. Uh, that that caused him want to want to be a, a father figure, a pastoral figure. Um, you know, a mentor to our ministry, to you. And we're going to get into some of that because the story gets really good. But that is uh, chapter three of your book, The Man You Called uh, Dad. And it goes on to searching for a, a meaning. And uh, chapter five talks about Shark Tank, a girl and a savior. Uh, you know, there's always girls involved, uh, you know, in the MMA and, and, you know, in all of our, I was saying all of our lives, but you know, that, not in mine, but I'll re rephrase that. But you know what I'm saying? There's just there's so much temptation and so many things that uh, that come after the anointing, and the anointing is in the ministry. The anointing on you is in the cage, and so this book is going to talk about uh, some of those struggles. But chapter nine, uh, Brian, sometimes tears bleed the most. Um, wow! So this chapter talks about you and Kung Lee, and who is the veteran in, in kickboxing as well and strike force and Kung Lee, I think, even uh, does movies and acting and what you know, uh, what do you call it? Um, when they're the, huh, they do the, 
acts. The, the, oh, the kung, I can't even think the of kung the kung fu scene, the fight scenes. The fight and, scenes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's a martial, yeah. Chun martial artist yes. and uh, one of the best fighters, I would say, in the world. And I got a chance to fight him twice. Um, once in Vegas at the Blasio and uh, once in his hometown in yes. uh, San Jose. Yeah, it, uh, that's, Bro- yeah. Both brutal fights. Uh, you want to talk about being in there with the, the giants and the killers and the best of the best. Yeah. He's definitely one of them. But yeah, I kind of jumped ahead and that's, that's my bad. Um, but in chapter eight, I wanted to bring up, you know, we talked about, there was a reason why I said the girl, the, you know, in, in one of the chap in chapter eight, you t- it talks about that you were supporting a son that you thought were yours, that you thought this boy was yours and you were buying clothes and food and everything that child needed only to find out when the blood test came back, this was not your child. And, um, what a story you guys, I mean, again, Again, it's not the anointing. It's not these awesome good looks. It's not all of that. But it, it, this book of your light, your, your story up until to now tells about your commitment to spiritual children, your commitment to, to, to the sons that are without a father. And uh, so that's an interesting part of the book. Definitely an interesting part of the book. I, I you know, I had a fake child, like, you know, fake, a fake, yeah, fake, fake, fake child. News. I had a fake child. I, mean, I bet many of you didn't know that, right? Yeah. And you know what? It's so crazy. When I read that and we picked it up and we, we started going over it, I was like, wow, I, for, I totally forgot about wow. that, that part yes. of my life too. Yes. You, I mean, so much has happened throughout my life that this book has, like I said, it, it brought a lot out of me, a lot of emotions. And, um, it, it was, it was, it was a tough, it was a tough thing. And, um, mm. you know, uh, yeah. Blood, blood results came back. Ninety nine point nine percent, yes, is not your child. And wow, did that! that I would talk about being yeah, confused yeah, yeah. after that. Yeah, I can imagine. And and it goes on because I, I was taking care of this kid for about a you know a good two months or so. Yes, I mean, and that's because I thought that was the right thing to do. That speaks volumes about you. And then when we go into chapter nine, when we talk about Kung Lee, um, I think this is just uh, I'm going to read what you said, and then uh, I want to. Uh, to just bring out one sentence that really, really struck me. If anybody's dealt with uh, suicide uh, tendencies, depression, you know, listen, you guys, we understand we've been there. There are demonic spirits that will attack you, especially when you've been through trauma. There's, I know there's a video of ours going around about uh, per, uh, physical injuries related to traumas in your life. And, uh, but I, if I may, I, I, I want to read this part. It says, I remember that fight with Kung Lee. When my wife at the time was there, she was emotional and she was crying and it hurt. The first face I remember was seeing hers, was was seeing your ex-wife, your wife at the time. I felt so ashamed for being knocked out in front of her, for how it happened, for embarrassing her like that. She was wearing a Mr. Unbreakable t-shirt, so everyone knew she was there for me. But she didn't hide her face or anything. She just smiled at me. And in her smile was so much love. My heart broke right then because I loved I loved her too, and I felt I had let her down. It was Lee's hometown, and everybody was see, laughing at me. You see how painful this book is? Thousands <laughs> of people. And that's right. when my ex-wife stood up and she began to clap for me. And I believe many of your listeners are going to read this book and get up and clap for you, Pastor Brian. They're, they're, they know the fast, sto- fast forward story of us. And being homeless and on the road for three years and the losses of our children and so many different things. And I believe they're going to read this story and clap for you and stand. I believe all Team Unbreakable and social media is going to stand up and give you honor uh, for what you've accomplished just in the 42 years of your life. But um, 43 now. Excuse me, 43. Just had a birthday. But this (laughs) is the statement I would like for you to talk to um, our KCWG listeners about. That second loss to Kung Lee shattered Brian's confidence, sending him into depression. So I would like to know, you know, really what happened, what what caused you to spiral into depression, Brian? And just tell tell your listeners. Well, choices. I I I am I gotta I gotta back up. Not that it's an inexcuse, I'm fighting one of the best in the world, but there was a choice that I made two weeks before that mm-hmm. particular fight was to fight somebody else. Um, in my hometown, it's actually in Hollywood, Southern California, and I fought a guy by the name of Brody Farber, main event, high-level fight, on the way down to Hollywood Palladium, um, I get a call from the 
the promoter of uh, Strike Force, Scott Coker, which is the promoter now of Bellator. And he says, Brian, I heard you're like fighting tonight in the main event at Hollywood. You can't do that. You're my main event, co-main event um, on Strike Force coming up mm, with against wow. Kung Lee. And I said, Man, I don't. My financial situation tells me that I need to fight tonight. I have no choice. I'm going to fight. Mm. Um, I'm going to win this fight, and I'll come fight your champion next. And that's exactly what I did. But but I had to fight that fight very different. I I, I fought, fought very careful, and I took a lot of punishment. I took a lot of shots, and I still had knots on my head from the mm. two to the fight two weeks ago, two weeks prior to the fight with Kung Lee, wow. and I got knocked out against Kung Lee, the first time I've ever been knocked out in my life. And mm. that just really messed me up because I was known for my chin and known for being super tough. Mm. And that was like my, I was, I got knocked out. And, and, yeah, and yeah. in front of, not just in front of my ex-wife, my wife at the time, and thousands of people. And to mention that, the, the fan, a fan jumped in my face and, you know, right after the fight. And, and I talk about being, feeling like you're nothing. He jumped mm. in my face, cussed me out, smelling like beer and, you know, just some idiot in yeah, the crowd. Yeah. But it was the, another voice. Another voice. Got me when I was down. Kicked me while I was down. And, mm, uh, man, mm, it, it hurt. Wow. It hurt. Talk about being humble. And, uh, you know, I, even people around in the – and now that I think about it, all the fighters wouldn't even look at me. I was so angry. Like, I was ready to fight somebody else right after that fight. People just – I mean, they didn't want to look at my face. They mm. Either they, they were like, oh, this guy got knocked out. So, I mean, it messes with your head. When you're in a, when you're a professional fighter, you is one of the hardest things to do because you're in there to either win or to lose, and you are going to either be praised or you're going to be ridiculed. Mm. There is no, there is no in between. You can't fight and then the next day get up and fight again. And, and if you lost, try to try to redeem yourself. Wow. You got to wait two, three, four, six months sometimes, maybe even a year to fight again, depending on mm. how bad your injuries mm. are. And it plays a, such a mental, uh, it messes with your head big time. Yeah, and I and on that note, uh, when we mentioned, uh, you know, when we we go and meet with some of these uh, high level fighters, uh, having said what you just said and fighting the depression and and the fame um, and the pride and, and and you know the name on billboards, you fought in some. Of, what, what are some of the venues? I fought in Strike Force, uh, King of the Cage, Gladiator Challenge, Bellator, um, Pangea, Vegas. you name it, Las Vegas K One. But, but Where I, in Las Vegas did you fight? Uh, Bellagio, the Bellagio and the Mirage. And the Mirage, okay. Um, mm -hmm. I believe I was the only fighter to ever fight in five different kickboxing styles, one, a different one each time. Wow. Um, and e even Kung Lee at his sport, San, San Show. So it's, it's crazy. But I do got to say this. Um, after that fight with Kung Lee and I lost, I started taking fights for the money. I, didn't I, I lost that fight. Mm. I didn't care anymore. I was just like, I'll fight this guy. I'll fight this guy. Mm. I fought Jeremy Horn. I had five. I lost five in a row. So imagine losing one fight, now losing two fights, three, four, five in a row. Now your confidence goes so far down. It's almost. It is. It was. You talk about depression. Mm, mm. I was in the the lowest of lows as a fighter. My record was going down, and then I went on like a seven, like a six or seven fight win streak after that. Mm. So, I, so I had a battle out of that. That was tough. Well, I can imagine how that now. Um, the, the, how that equates to the ministry now and how so many ministers will take preaching. They'll take assign not assignments, excuse me. They will take invitations just for the money. Um, they will, um, you know, they, 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 some want that fame. Some want that attention. Some want that high. Um, mm -hmm. They need the money. They need the money. So now they get into this manipulation to make money. Um, it just, I can see, and I'm sure, right, listeners and, and you know, our Facebook um, family, I can only imagine how you can see, and, and once you read um, Unbreakable Love, the Brian Warren story, you'll be able to even see, like, wow, I can really fathom now why this man is so grounded, can't be manipulated, can't be bought, he doesn't need to um, hustle for anything, he's not going to step into the ring unless God tells him to. Because you've said so many times, honey, to to myself and so many uh, platforms that you've preached on that you have you have really learned more from your losses than your wins. Do you want to tell the listeners a little bit about what that means? Oh my gosh! Because yeah. shouldn't we focus on what we've won and how we did that so we do it again? Well, 
I know everybody wants to be around a winner, and I know everybody gravitates towards the person that's winning. That's why people, you know, football teams win, and all of a sudden there's like more football fans. I mean, people gravitate towards winners. That's natural. We get all that. But, you know, for me particularly, I believe I've fought some of the really high-level guys, and I've lost to a lot, and I've won a lot of fights too. But it's something about being a fighter and, and losing – Mm. you don't want to lose the same way twice you you actually train if you lose a certain way you get maybe caught in a choke or something like that and you practice 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 so you never get caught in that again um there's something i call i call the replays it's like watching a film strip it just non-stop if you Mm. lose a fight Mm. that reel just keeps real it keeps going and it does not stop and and i'm so competitive naturally that like i don't want to lose i'm not purposely going to try to lose ever and you know those, I believe that film strip keeps playing mm. until I figure out how to assess that and, and how to figure out how that to never lose that way Ooh, again. Oh, I love that. And then that and that I love that. I equate everything that I've learned in the in the the fight game, the the fight experience, over to ministry and how spiritual attacks happen. And if something, if I got caught mm. in my guard down here, I guarantee you it's not going to happen again. Love it. The devil's not going to get me again. And he's stupid. He just he he does the same tactics, but he uses different people. Okay. Different people. Okay. So it's there's nothing new under the sun. Same method, a different mask. Just a different. That's Someone should write that down. Same method, a different mask. That'll be another book. That'll be another one of our books. But I, I love that, um, Brian, because um, something that I think our listeners really need to know about you, and to know about a fighter. You know, when I was praying for you uh, some time ago, the Lord said, you know, this is. This is an innate ability I've given him. And, and I'm like, what is innate? And it literally means when you've stood before the Lord, it's it's something that he put inside of your character, into the very fiber of your muscles, your tendons, your ligaments. It's, it's the very oxygen and nitrogen that just runs through your, your blood. And, uh, you know, people might say, well, why do you fight back on Facebook? Why do you just leave people on? Because fighters fight. Look at Trump. He is a fighter. And most people, Brian, would say, look at Trump. Like, he needs to stop tweeting. Why is he saying, you know, uh, you know, Comey's an idiot and he's just a coward? And he's, well, why is he calling out by name? Because he's a fighter. Fighters, when you corner fighters, like they that. don't cower. And I wrote something down here that you said. A true fighter will never back down from a fight. We never back down. But it's important to have a voice or a manager helping you or fighters will fight to the death. Explain that to to us. What does that mean? It's important to have a manager, and you won't back down from a fight. Yeah, you know, it, it's it's one of those things, and I'll just I'll try to keep keep this short because I'll just keep going, um, keep talking, and sometimes I get on a little rabbit trail. But no, let them know. I mean, we want to know what makes you a fighter. Why don't you back down? What? Why are you not Pastor mm. Speakeasy? You know. <laughs> <laughs> When I when I first became a Christian, I I, I, I took a lot of uh, hashtag speak easy. I took a lot of punches, like you know, spiritually. I want to say from a lot of seasoned Christians, mm, mm. And, and and they Family they, they Bible bashed me and they mm-hmm. they smashed me with the word and and this and that and you know and, and we're always running to, and wanted to argue about stuff, you know, when it comes to the Bible, and and to me, I just like there's certain things that are. Mm-hmm. Uh, common sense, you know, um, and oops, okay, yeah, I got it. Um, you touch me, yeah. You know, a lot of things didn't sit well with me, but but I want to say this, uh, you know, a fighter, you cannot, you cannot, like you said, you can't yeah. corner a true fighter. Yeah. Um, I have a very very calm demeanor, but I can go from calm to a hundred and. 50 in two seconds, but I'll take a lot. I'll take a lot. I'll take a lot. Yeah. I'll take a lot. And, but then all of a sudden, that's it. When it, when it goes to a certain point and, and I'll just bring this out. We got bashed recently, um, from a very high profile person Yeah, on a media mountain, you know, I had to, he was harassing my wife. Oh, he you know, was with, with text he was. messages. And I he said, found out though. I said, baby, listen, Listen, I'm going to take your phone in a second, and I'm going to call this man. But don't you know who he is in Hollywood? Man, I... <laughs> we don't care who you are. Nobody scares me. If you me. ain't serving Jesus and you ain't doing it in love, man you don't scare story. us. No. So I, I, I got the text, the, the last one, do you know who I am? 
Oh, my husband took the phone out of my no. hand so fast. No. Do you know who I am? Oh. Do you know who I am? That's and, right. And I'm not. I'm not here to threaten anybody. But, but you were you, threatened. You don't want to see. I was threatened. You don't want to see. No. Mr. Unbreakable. Yeah. You don't want to see him, especially. You don't want to use those type of words where you're acting like you're better than us and better than our ministry yes. and looking down on and us then and cursing it. Cursing our ministry. No. You don't no. want to do that, especially. You don't want to do that in person. I, obviously, it's over the phone, so you're a little safer. But yes, well, he that. thinks he is. He's in God's hands now, though. Yeah, it's it's not. not yeah, not good I mean, we, we deal with so much, you guys. You know that every ministry, right? I mean, uh, but we've been called to the White House. We have been called to the church house and the courthouse, and uh, we are taking those steps. And it, it, you have to have fighters. Fighters can only take those long haul steps and and hold on because we will be sharing uh, what Truth and Love Ministry is about, ready to launch into. You guys have been faithfully partnering with us, and uh, yes. we just want to we want to share some really cool stuff. But um, but again, we we are just encouraging you to uh, go to uh, Amazon Smiles or Amazon, but Amazon Smiles will donate to our ministry as well uh, through all the purchases. But we're asking you to support uh, the ministry, my husband, um, the story. It's going to be a blessing to you. I'm glad you don't have to hustle these books. You know uh, he. I, you know, honey, I feel led to ask you this. I, I know I don't want to put you on the spot, but, uh, and you don't have to be like right on the number. I'm on the spot. Do you know about how many books you actually gave away and did not charge for? Just. I know the number was over a thousand. Okay. And, uh, We're calling in a thousand uh, book orders today then. Hmm. Because, you know, I am. Life speaks of those things. They're not as though they were. Amen. We're going to call a thousand book orders in today. You gave them away, sweetheart. I, I was a witness to it. I was a witness to it. Uh, actually, my husband retired uh, when I met you. Uh, we were friends. You were an armor bearer with the ministry. And uh, I was in prayer for you uh, before one of your fights the night before. And the Holy Spirit told me uh, he's not going to take a hit. Because I was like, I don't want him to go, I don't like this. I don't like this stuff. I, I, uh -huh. I heal people. I don't hit them. <laughs> and uh, so I was like, oh. And so I came to you. And I said, the Holy Spirit told me uh, as we were driving to your fight with, with some friends, I said, um, he said, you're not going to take a hit. And you laughed. Okay, silly woman. Okay, silly woman. You don't really know what happens in the cage. Okay. And I'm like, well, God well, I told always me. get hit. That's, that's, that, that's yeah, how I start off. Always get hit. But, it helps, uh, helps me wake up. Yeah. And, uh, well, needless to say, you were the main card and your opponent chickened out and took off. He actually left. Now that I think about this, <laughs> honestly, so, now, you I, get hit. now I think about, I think, an angel or something probably scared him off. Probably. He, he was, they called his name and uh, he was gone. He was nowhere <laughs> to be found. Yeah. How Amen. crazy is that? You have 250 people come watch you um, yeah. at an event that's maybe, you know, 1,500 people. And yes. you got the majority of the crowd there and your opponent disappears. And yeah, how, yeah. How, uh, how embarrassing was that? To, to go in, had to go in the ring and. Why is it embarrassing? Your apologize. opponent left. <laughs> but I, everybody came to see me, and how disappointing for everybody. Yeah, but yeah. It wasn't my fault, but it was interesting that that happened. It, it, she absolutely. called it. You're not going to get hit. I'm like, huh? What? I always get hit. Yes, absolutely. So, I mean, you know, I, I'm just amazed at the the man you really are. I mean, you're such an amazing man, and your heart is to raise up these fighters. You know, we we think they're in the church. I'm not going to say they're not. I'm sure there's some in the church building. But the Lord has really shown us so many of us that have um, fought wars in our in, in our in our heads in our land. We've had so many. You know, I've been all over Sudan. You know, running from AK-47s and um, you know uh, Antonov bombs, and then pestilence, deadly snakes, and mamba snakes, and these kinds of things, and scorpions, and you know, fighting my own wars. You know, um, and uh, you know, we didn't find each other in a church, uh, and and so. You know, I just believe that there are a lot of warriors that are watching this uh, interview right now. And you're saying, wow, that just sounds like me. You know, I just don't fit in to three hymns, a joke, a fun message, and then a song, and then go get your latte at the back of the church. I don't fit into that. Warriors don't because our, our lives uh, have never been easy for us. Um, I mean, tell the people, it's in your book. Um, uh, let's see. I forget the chapter that this is in, um, but it's in, it's, I think it's in chapter two, the birth of a legend. How were you born? What was your, what was, Miss, that, who was the original Mrs. Unbreakable? That was a fight in itself that my mom, Doris, 
Marie Cole, if you're watching right now, just shout out to my mom. Mom, you know I, you know I love you. Um, but she actually had me, delivered me by herself, guys. So that was kind of crazy. Um, I don't remember a bit of it, but what I was told. <laughs> I don't remember a bit of it. <laughs> what I was told was you're so cute. I came into this world fighting. I'm probably going to leave fighting. But but she, uh, <laughs> I know there's going to be a movie about this someday. I know yeah, we it's do. The first yeah, we're going to have a movie done on this. It's the first yes. scene that I see that mm -hmm. in the movie I can see it. Uh -huh. but my mom is, is on the bed. She didn't have a vehicle back in the day in 1974, June 5th, 1974. <laughs> And uh, my two older sisters were were sleeping next to her on the bed mm -hmm. in, in the middle of the day. And uh, here I came, nobody around. She couldn't get to a phone. Yeah, yeah. She grabs, she takes me to the, uh, delivers me, get, takes me to the kitchen and grabs a hatchet or a some, hatchet. Some, sort, some sort or some knife, right? Sharp Probably knife. a cleaver. <laughs> Probably, right? And whack. And uh, that's, the, that's the movie scene that that's I see. That's the beginning of the movie scene. Boom, you see this, this whatever hatchet come up. Come down, chop the and horn, then he's getting hit in the ring. And all of a sudden, it goes into a fight scene. Yes. I mean, getting kicked or something. You know, religious spirits just don't have any place in where we're at now, Brian. Um, you know, the God. Church, the church is not the same anymore. No, God, it, it can't be. God is raising up men like you, women like myself, and those that are watching. Uh, you know, we we learn to walk in love. We turn to the other cheek. Uh, but people need to understand what the actual Greek uh, meaning. Of that turn the other cheek doesn't mean uh, to be hit again. That's actually not what it means. But, um, you know, you can't corner fighters. And, uh, you know, many of many have tried to do that to you. But um, I'd like to ask you this now, Pastor Brian, before we have to um, kind of sum this up. But uh, I, I really am excited for people to get this book so they can learn about uh, the rest of this book and the things that are, are spoken to you, uh, the, the different fights and what you learned um, in them. And then your daughter, which is chapter 10. So with our daughter now, because now I have daughter number three married to you, I don't believe in being a stepmother. Um, I'm a spiritual mother. I do not have stepchildren. I don't step on them. Uh, they, I have spiritual children. And uh, now our, our little one is mine as well. And what an honor. Uh, but I'd like to ask you, and I think our listeners would like to know, where are you now? Uh, this this book was uh, it were it was 2013 that it was originally published. Um, then you met me, Mrs. Unbreakable. <laughs> Should you flip that light off, please? I'm just yeah, we're just kind of watching the glare. lighting on this here. Um, and uh, Not that one. so uh, that one, sorry. so where are you now? Uh, you. Uh, seeing your daughter. Uh, it, are you able to sit outside or school? Like, what's going on with, with your daughter, your life? Who are you now? Yes. Let the listeners know. You know, um, you know we're still in the process of, of, uh, of getting our own home so that she may come visit it and whatnot. And, you know, I've, I've never stopped trying to be in my daughter's life. Uh, that's, you know, you see, every, 100%. you see every day, every night, how much I try to either reach out or call or, or get to SoCal on a on a moment's notice and come watch a play or whatever we can do, whatever I can do to get me in her Amen. life. That's what I'll do. Yes. And I'll continue to do that until the, the day I'm, I leave this planet. Um, but uh, last night was an enjoyable night. She's got a new iPhone and she did FaceTime with us. And Oh, she, did we have fun? That was, that was probably yes. one of the most, that yes. was some, she was very happy and it, it, it makes me happy to see her happy. Yeah. She adores you. She adores you. So, I mean, all, so you've learned a lot from, uh, you know, having to, you know, put a case of books in your trunk and try to mm -hmm. try to trunk and hustle. Um, and, and, you know, you, God's taught you so much. I can vouch for your patience. Uh, you know, we left SoCal. We left everything. I left my daughters as well. Mm -hmm. um, no, mine are not 10 years old, but I was a homeschool mom um, in their life every single day of their lives. And uh, I had to leave them as well. And um, the enemy attacks. Uh ministers children let me just tell you that right now uh can't, you know if he can't get to you he'll go you. after your offspring and uh, so there's been great sacrifices um in in all of this and so you know i just i just want to tell you how very proud i am of you um so grateful that this book on um your story has come out uh james franchier even said you know everything was going as planned until brian cracked me with that overhand right the time between the punch and my back hitting the mat and the fence does not exist for me. He doesn't even remember, you know. So these are some of the things. Brian was great at getting all these young guys, mostly all the low income 
in their little names and he raised them up and gave them opportunity. I just have chills. I have filled all the ghosts because that's who you are, Brian. Uh, you know, someone of great importance uh, wanted to uh, introduce himself and shake your hand uh, the other day, but you were talking to a janitor and you would not leave that janitor. Uh, you would not take your gaze and your attention off of what he was trying to tell you in order to shake the hand of someone who thought he was somebody. And, and I love that about you, Brian. Um, we love all of God's people, regardless of their titles, no titles. And that's why this ministry can't be bought. Uh, we, we can't be manipulated. We can't be seduced and we can't be coerced. We go on assignment where God tells us to go. And so I, I think that kind of leads us into uh, giving you the good news. Uh, you know, so we have a few things. And I know uh, Michelle's going to be posting some stuff on the screen for you uh, if I say things too fast. But another good book I want to give a shout out is A Good Death uh, is Greg Wark. Uh, you know, again, uh, Prophet Kim Clement's best friend, Boots on the Ground. Um, there, him and Jane are even heading out of the country uh, on the 17th. Lots of awesome stuff. But, you know, he's taken us under his wing. God help him. Uh, because uh -huh. we're very difficult to keep under someone's wing. Uh, but we love him. We trust him. And uh, he just uh, has made an offer you can't refuse. No. Yeah. What are you doing uh, September 8th through 10th that all of our uh, listeners can go to the website and, and uh, register for this conference? I'm going to be traveling out, guys, to Tennessee. Well, that's your first stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's number one. Um, and I'm so gonna... you're on staff now with I'm Mission Force. Uh, last year. I really wanted to attend this event, and uh, things didn't work out. Uh, I cried. Financially. I, I cried because God didn't provide. I almost cried. I did. I almost cried. He almost cried. I did cry. I was upset, but, you know, hey, <laughs> you know, things happen, and uh, I think, you know, uh, Greg really saw who, a lot of my character and who I was during that time. He really wanted me there. Um, he actually says he was upset that he didn't get me to come out there, but, you know, he's bringing me out this time, and I'm, I'm on the staff now with these guys, and I'm going to yeah, I'm working with... Teaching rear naked chokes. My I like that. I don't know why. It's just a fun way to... I don't my know. wife's going to get me thrown out of an airplane or something? Yeah, he gets thrown out of an airplane. But you only, gonna, be, only because she told I, me I need to. to say a few things, uh, if, if I may. You are you can go to register for this event. Uh, the first one will be in Tennessee uh, in September. In November, it will be in Dallas. Uh, so Brian is now on the team with elite special operators, Navy SEALs. You're going to receive personal one-on-one -on -one attention with men of valor. You're going to learn, learn shooting tactics taught by SEALs. This isn't promise keepers. You're not going to sit in a circle and, you know what I mean, like, and talk about Weird your stuff. bad thoughts. Yeah. You're going to, okay, get what I'm saying? This is Navy SEAL kind of stuff. You're going to do MMA drills with my husband, um, instruction with self-defense taught by Brian Warren, leadership, character, honor, integrity. So you're going to learn key teachings from men who lead a life of valor. When you apply these teachings to your life and your business, growth occurs. Growth in your life and growth around you. And don't forget, you're going to have the time of your life. So you're going to do something that no one else will do. This is not a barbecue, people. Uh, you're not trading the rabbi for a rabbi. You are www.warriorweekend.us is September 8th through 10th. 8 through 10, and yeah. uh, they can register and sign up for that event yes. and uh, work with my husband, along with other just phenomenal uh, men that have fought for your country, for my country, and this is, you're you're going to be around your own kind, baby. You get to go out with the lions instead of lay out with... These dudes are badass. Can I say badass? You can, say, that. badass, I can I say that on the radio. And then we also want to let you know, October 13th through 15th, uh, my husband and I will be doing a marriage conference, so shout out to all of our Inland Empire uh, uh, Team Unbreakables. If not, you can, if you're, you know, want to fly in from uh, another area, it's October 13th or 15th. Please, uh, you will not contact Truth Love Ministry International for the details and for registration. You will contact KCWG. Uh, they will give you, uh, you know, the airports and the hotels and all the information and the registration information. But so my husband will be and I will be uh, uh, tag teaming for a marriage conference in October 13th or the 15th. So I think this is actually. Truth and Love Ministry is not putting this on. We've been asked to do this. Uh, so we're honored. This is our first one, baby. We're really excited to do this with Pastor Starks. And yeah, we are. We're, wife and we're so grateful they asked us to be a part of this. And we are asking you to come and be a part of that if you'd like some um, real, not Frozen Chosen. Because we don't do Frozen Chosen stuff. 
So go ahead and contact KCWG for the October event. And then thirdly, uh, my husband and I will be in Washington, D.C., uh, September 23rd. Uh, you know, yeah, it's been prophesied by uh, three major prophets, one being my dearest and best friend, Wendy Alec, uh, that my feet were going to touch on in Washington, D.C., and some other things. Um, and so we definitely have an opportunity, uh, if everything comes yes. together, uh, for us to uh, step into the White House on um, on September 23rd. So we took a little sabbatical, and a few things have been happening. Yes, I am still working on my book. Uh, it's almost done. We're almost there, folks. Um, this has been one of this has been my king of the cage. Yeah, this has been my time. battle. And I spoke these words, and I it was I just speak what I feel God has wanted me to speak, but I told her this is going to be the hardest, you know, two, three months that you've ever to be focused and just on this thing. Things yeah. are going to come at you, distractions. Oh, and, they're all over the place. And, and as a fighter, I'm just going to tell you guys, as a fighter, you got to be so disciplined and so focused and be able to see things yeah. from wide and then start to narrow it in real close as it gets closer to the time of your, your fight. So, but you they're know, demonic attacks too, not just yeah, of course. not just a distraction. Like of course, yeah. of course, of yeah, course yeah. It is. But, but so, but that's why this book uh, is going to really release revival. Uh, we are so excited. I know many of you have been asking about it. Um, so we just want to thank everybody for uh, you know just your are your partnership and supporting Truth and Love Ministry International. Um, and and we're really excited about what God is doing with this ministry. You can go to our website at tnlmi.org. Uh, we are not afraid or ashamed or shy to ask for your financial support. That's right. Hello, we're not hirelings. Uh, <laughs> we we are shaking the three houses right. uh, prophetically with the word of God, and we are not backing down. And you know, it takes finances to travel. <laughs> uh, you know, oh, yeah. to do what we're going to do. Uh, and so, we just thank you um, not only for uh, supporting my husband and uh, just get receiving an impart a warrior impartation of Caleb's spirit. From the Unbreakable Book, which you can go ahead and order now. Again, we're believing for a thousand. He gave away a thousand um, on Amazon. Uh, but we just thank you for all of your love and support. And KCWG always, uh, they run our, our radio broadcast every Thursday at 7 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, even though we're on a break. But uh, a lot of the messages are just, well, yeah, phenomenal. Yeah, you know, we're, we're, getting, doing something good. we're getting a lot of people that are actually sharing old messages through Facebook and, and YouTube and whatnot. And you know, some of them pop up, and I'm like, "Wow, I don't, I can't remember I said that. I can't remember you said that." That's a but, prophetic, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you watch those things ten times over, and you're still gonna get revelation because mm. true prophets speak a, a now word. So, how are we on time with the radio station? We're doing excellent. Okay. We got actually two minutes. Oh, good. Left. So, see, we don't have a little timer in front of us, so we're so professional, aren't we? But um, again, shout out to Greg Wark, a good death. I'm not the Oprah Winfrey Book of the Month Club. Uh, first of all, but all, also the books in which you read, uh, they are inspired by, by some kind of spirit. <laughs> so, right. uh, you know, whoever you think you're supporting that says they're a Christian and they're not, please be very careful because there is an impartation that comes from the books you're reading. Their spirit right. comes through their work, their work of art. Okay. So Gregory Wark's book, A Good Death, I'm telling you, it is, no, I, I, I would say, you know, I love Steve Hill's um, Avalanche. Yes. I tell everybody to read that. Uh, I tell everybody they need to read a tale of three kings for sure. Uh, everyone, if they want to learn to submit and take arrows and not take somebody else's anointing when God has still put them in their place. But a good death, Jesus died a good death. The sad thing is many people are dying yes. an unrighteous death. They're not dying a good death. They're dying on hot dogs, Man. aneurysms. Oh, don't get me started. Yes. But you're not dying a very good death. And I'm telling you, I can't even do justice. His book is a phenomenal. Now, we can't get out of definitely this. Definitely a now word. I mean, a now word. It's for sure. Order this on Amazon as well. Thank you. And thank you guys so much for uh, just watching this. I mean, make sure you share this video. Please uh, do. Please share the video. For friends. Yeah. And uh, thank you for your support, your love and support of Unbreakable Love and supporting me and my wife, my beautiful wife, obviously, and uh, Prophet Gina Guy Warren and KCWG The Truth. And now, Warrior Weekend. Um, September. A lot of things are coming together, guys. I'm, I'm, yeah. I, I, I got to say this. Congratulations, honey. I got to say this. I know it's because I've been patient. Yes. I know it's been because I've, patient, I've been patient. And whatever God has taught me in that patience is the reason why these doors are now opening. Yes. I believe that with all my heart. Yes. So. Wait upon the Lord. Quava. Mm -hmm. oh, it's, it's, it's Hebrew for hopeful expectation. 
Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Wait. Hopefully expect great things to happen for you. You are partnering with us and you're sowing in good seed. It's coming to you. Goodbye to, not goodbye, until we meet again. Yes. KCWG, the truth listeners, we love you Amen. all around the world. God bless you, Pastor Starks. And welcome to our Zija team. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. And we're going to go ahead and close up on Facebook Live. And again, it's not goodbye. It's until we meet again. We thank you for your prayers. See, we took a sabbatical from our Facebook Lives on Thursday nights because we really wanted to hone in. Closer. You want me to come, come in close, baby? Come on, close. We really wanted to, uh, um, we're going to go ahead and close off the YouTube.